Hey, Robert. Got the violin. I was gonna put it on the gamba, but the gamba is tuned down into old pitch. It's a half a tone lower, and I don't wanna complicate your cello life with that. But this is the violin. So it means that I've... I mean, E, E, A, D, G, and whereas you are C, G, D, A. Now, there's a, there's a good trick that I did with my cello, which I'm gonna to suggest to you. You can buy a high E for the cello. So you can tune the cello like an octave uh, violin which means you go G, D, A, E. It makes a lot of sense in terms of playing pieces and stuff, you know, because it's the same shapes as, as the violin and it's the same as, it will be the same shapes as your, as your mandolin and stuff. So everything you play on the mandolin, you can play on, the, on your cello, but it'll be, it'll, be, uh, it'll be an octave lower, which is neat. Now what you do is you go to Johnson Strings or, or anywhere, just, just Google high E string for for cello, and you take the C off and put the G where the C, the C was and so forth, it goes G, D, A, E, and you have a low, it's still functioning as a low, the only thing is missing, it's, it's better really, because you're missing the low C, which is not played that much, not really, you know, right? but, but you have, on the other hand, you have that high E, which makes a lot of difference when you're trying to get up the scale, especially when you're starting this thing, so I would give that some serious consideration, and anyway, so we're going to talk about Boeing. Now, I, 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 I bow underhanded, gamba style, since that's the way I learned to do it. And I like it better. And, and in this particular, when I play the, the fiddle like this or the gamba, it, it just suits, suits my style. But it's the same, the same thing. And in my case, if, 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 you, if you're overhand like this, like the overhand technique, it's still the index finger, which is which is putting pressure on the bow. Okay, you're lock, you're locked like 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 this somehow or other, and the index finger is is what is leaning into the bow. The same thing here. Okay, so it really doesn't make any difference. Pressure, the pressure is, is a rela it's relaxed in the hand and the, and the pressure is is created with the index finger. And the way to do it is to do it until it scratches and then back off. absolute parallelity of the bow with the bridge. And that's going to take some doing. You don't want this. You don't want that. We're going to come across. And I, I, I wondered why when, when I started, started doing this and someone I watched the, the, the big dogs doing it and was trying to figure out what the fuck they were doing and why. And I asked them and they said, well, what happens is it makes an even clear tone all the way across. And you want that clear, even sound come to the end of your stroke and reverse it. Furthermore, you want to understand that if the flatness, the flatness of the bow is sort of ideal, but nobody does it. They do this, they turn it like this, so you're on that outside edge. And I, I'm not sure why they do that, except that it gives them more control, I think. And I've, I've found that to be the case too. So it gives me a variety of sounds. It, it, this, It's just a little bit different and it's also a little less risky because there's less air on the string and with less with less contact I have more control and you want to practice you want to
to practice diligently stuff like this. <laughs> cello to get up to that because he only goes high as that's your open first string so if you do if you get that if you get that first string thing change your stringing so the high string becomes a mirror of the of the violin we can play duets together and not only that but you can apply like I said I'm saying this repetitiously I know but you can apply everything you know on the mandolin to your cello and that's what you want you don't want to fuck around with, with learning all the different positions and shades on the cello and trying to be fucking yo-yo, whatever his name is. You want to you wanna be able to do what you know how to do on this extremely difficult instrument. It's hard enough. Just, just... Just to get a sound out of it. It's hard. You want, you want the sound to have depth. joy thing that but that's what we're gonna do now is we're gonna play and we're gonna play it in the key of G so that puts you on your on your third string we're gonna play the chanter's tune and then we're gonna go from G up to D which will take you up to your first and second string okay so the, the chanter's tune remember is Thank you. 
Okay, I better quit this or I'll never upload it. I'll have fun with this.